Good morning, friends. I want to welcome everyone here this morning, and I want to welcome everyone joining us through our broadcast this morning. I want to invite those joining us through our broadcast to respond to the broadcast with any joys or concerns that you'd like to share, and we'll make sure to share those as we prepare for our prayer time later on. Uh, so well, welcome everyone. I do want to share some announcements in the life of our church and community. One of the first things I'd like to ask you to do, of course, is to register your attendance. Our ushers at this time are handing out our uh, registration pads, and I ask uh, you to fill those out and uh, pass those down. And if you're joining us through our broadcast, you can respond to the broadcast. Let us know uh, your thoughts and that you're online with us, and we'll be delighted to uh, receive that message. All right, um, looking ahead and looking at different things uh, where we're gathering and places that we're gathering, I uh, especially want to highlight that tomorrow night in our fellowship hall at 6 p.m., uh, the Reverend Matt Rawl, he's the pastor of Asbury United Methodist Church in Bossier, uh, will be with us. He is on the delegation being sent from Louisiana to our general conference that this time is being held in Charlotte. And he will give, be giving us some information about what to anticipate about uh, the general conference that's up and coming. So I hope if at all possible, or if you would like to, that you will gather tomorrow night in the fellowship hall to receive that experience. Also, uh, looking ahead to Tuesday, at 1 o'clock, the UWF Circle meeting will take place. Our missions team will meet on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. And then one week from today, be thinking about what dish you would like to bring. I'm so excited, not only about sharing a meal with you, amen? Amen? But also to share more with you about... Uh, the mission trip to Cuba, and all the experiences along with that. And then our plan as well along with that is to celebrate our centenarians uh, that are a part of the life of our church. So we look forward to all of that taking place. We are taking donations towards uh, Teacher Appreciation Day, so be aware of that. And we are taking applications for scholarships. And our men, and uh, as we invite other men uh, in our church to be a part of our prayer breakfast, we should note that we are having a location change. The church is leaving the building, amen? And we are going out to Denny's, and we'll be having our prayer breakfast out there. I think for the very first time in 52 or 3 some odd years, right? So we're taking a bold step out, I believe, and looking forward to meeting uh, at Denny's right here in Southern Hills on Mansfield Road. So take a note of that in your calendar. All right, friends, if I keep making announcements, I'm going to start, start preaching. So let me not do that and save that for later. And let's continue our worship service with our choral intro. Will you please stand with me at this time for our call to worship? Let us read it responsively. How joyful it is to celebrate the good news of God's love. We are called to be Easter people. Darkness cannot claim us. Fear cannot bind us. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. 
Amen. Let us continue worshiping God by singing our hymn of praise, Crown Him with Many Crowns. continue worshiping God by saying what we believe together using the Apostles' Creed. Will you please join me as we say what we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated dear friends now at this time in preparation for our prayer time 
Let us gather and share our joys and concerns. And let's begin with joys and share, first of all, about any birthdays or anniversaries that are in the house today or that you'd like to share about. Yes. Yes. So Don Jackson's celebrating a birthday. So praise God for that. Amen. Other birthdays or anniversaries you'd like to share? Okay. This past week was Jimmy Barnhill's birthday. That's right. Yeah, Jimmy, and I know, I think you shared uh, this past Sunday, too, that it was your birthday, but I don't mind singing to you again, amen? Uh, praise God for that. We celebrate with you. Other birthdays or anniversaries? All right, well, let's sing happy birthday, then. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God loves you, happy birthday to you, and many more, amen. All right, friends, I'm turning on this microphone and coming out amongst you, and if you'll make it known that you would like to share a joy or concern by raising your hand, I'll come to you and bring you the microphone. And it's important to use it so that we could all hear what you have to say and so that the broadcast also can hear what you have to say. Uh, so I want to begin sharing with sharing a concern and ask your continued prayers. We shared this at the end of the service a week ago. But uh, for Polly Cook, uh, she's no longer in the hospital, but she is in a different uh, skilled care facility now, temporarily. Uh, so let's continue to pray for her. I know we're all used to seeing her every Sunday, so it's very different that she's not here. So please continue to pray for her and uh, for Betty Jo and for King who are supporting her care as well. Other joys or concerns you'd like to share? Yes, Betty, I'm coming to you. Please. Yes, ma'am. Uh, most of you or a lot of you know my sister Barbara. Uh, her daughter, they all went to St. Thomas for a wedding and her daughter... there with the blood clot in the lungs so really need your prayers for that okay and another one uh betty wilson's sister who just turned 101 i think uh fell and broke some ribs and she is in the hospital mm. so i know betty would want me to ask for prayers for her okay we'll surely be praying thanks for sharing that all right other joys or concerns this morning? Yes. Becky, I'm coming to you. My square dancing partner, I am coming to you. I have a great joy this week. My girls, uh, Teresa and Andrea, have been visiting. and We have had just more fun together. They're from the Greenville area and unfortunately leaving tonight. And I'll miss them. But it's been a great joy to have them here. Amen. Greenville, Mississippi? Is no. that no? Green, Greenville, South Carolina. Okay. There's several of those uh, in different states. So thank you. You've come from a long way. So welcome here. I'm glad you all had a good time. Other joys or concerns? All right, Ronnie. Well, I have two this morning. I, some of you might have heard that Judy Gallater 
our pianist that we've had here has had emergency surgery this past week, mm -hmm. but it's doing well, I understand, and uh, hopefully to be back at her job playing the piano again soon. We don't know how long that will be, so keep Judy and Charles in your prayers, please. Also, uh, please keep Peggy and I in your prayers. Peggy's sister, Inez, who was a member here, I've asked for prayer for her before, but she is uh, at the point of, of um, probably the end of her life. She's not gone yet, but she's not doing well, and we're expecting to hear that she might be gone soon. So please keep the whole family in your prayers because everything, we don't know, it's, it's undecided at this point that what God is doing. Yes, yes, so for Judy and for Inez and for your family, certainly. Yes, Peggy. Uh, I'd like prayers for my grandson, Jacob. His ship has been deployed to the Mediterranean. Okay, so we pray for Jacob. Thanks for sharing that, Peggy. Other joys or concerns this morning? Okay. Hearing no others, seeing no others, let's continue with our prayer time. I'll start us out in prayer and then there'll be a time of silence. And I invite you during that time of silence to focus on listening to God. And then we'll conclude our prayer time with the Lord's Prayer. Will you please pray with me? God, I thank you that you have created the world and all of us and that everything that we are and have is because of you and so we thank you this morning as we gather and as our hearts are truly burdened and reached reaching out to others that are in need that we offer prayers uh, for those that we've shared today God, in these situations where there is physical ailment or difficulty, we pray you would intervene and we pray that you, your healing power would be evident. In the situations, God, where loved ones are going through the process of letting go and letting themselves go into your arms and experiencing death and uh, and anticipating that, God, may your grace and your strength be upon that person and be upon uh, their family, we pray. And God, as we continue to walk with you, help us to continue to have the courage to, to share ourselves and to be bold and to stand in faith in you and to truly walk with you in the way that you've created us to so that we can share your light with the world so that we can let the world know that though there is darkness that your light overcomes that darkness God we pray that the power of you, the Holy Spirit, would truly embrace us this morning, that you would fill us to overflowing, that uh, it would be, as your Scripture says, rivers of living water flowing through us and from us uh, by the power of your Holy Spirit. So God, help us to draw closer to you and help us to share in that and the abundance of your grace and the joy of it. Uh, even though all of us in some way can acknowledge some difficulty in our lives. I thank you that uh, you 
And Jesus said, in this world there will be trouble, but behold, I've overcome the world. So help us to be those people that follow You, that believe in that overcoming power that You grant to us and give to us. God, in this neighborhood, as it has changed over the years and, and shifted in its demographics, and uh, I just give You thanks for each and every person. And I just pray that Your Holy Spirit would uh, be present in each home and that Your grace would be evident uh, as a witness to who You are uh, in each home that is gathered in this very neighborhood, God. And that You would be with our law enforcement and our first responders and that You would be with all of us as we continue to journey with You as Your church, as a light in this neighborhood. God, we continue our prayers as we take some time in silence to listen to what You would speak to us. So, speak to us, O God, we ask, for Your servants are now listening. O oh God, we continue our prayers as we offer to You the very prayer that Jesus taught us to pray as we all say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now will our ushers please come forward to receive God's tithes and our offerings? As they do, I want to highlight this QR code on the back of your bulletin. Uh, if you wish to give electronically, if you'll scan that with your device, and it will help you to navigate appropriately towards electronic giving. So friends, we're ready to give. That means we're ready to pray. So will you please pray with me? Oh God, we give you thanks for every resource that we have comes from you. Now God, we seek to echo your generosity and give you thanks for it by sharing the first fruits from it. So God, bless these gifts as we worship you with them and as we give thanks to you through them and bless them towards the good of your kingdom because you've already blessed us as the giver. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'd like to share a story with you before we sing our anthem today. A few years back, I attended a music seminar uh, at a church where uh, music companies come and bring samples of music that they have done and want to share them with you so you get to see what they're like before you would order them. I have one that I want to share with you today. There is a, a little story that goes with it, and it's about a young girl, 10 years old, was very active in her church. She played on the baseball team. She played with basketball. Every time the doors were open at the church, she was there. She also was taking piano lessons and doing very well at it, they told us. And this is in memory of Joanna Elizabeth Miller. 
1982-1992. Joanna died in an accident, I think they said with a dirt bike, but she was missed at the church. This is an anthem that was uh, written in memory of her based on Job 19 and Corinthians 13. And Mark says, I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God as a child will never enter it. So we know that Joanna probably entered it and this anthem is in memory of her.
Let's continue worshiping God by singing our hymn of witness, Now the Green Blade Riseth. seated, dear friends. I'd like to draw our time and attention at this point to our Scripture reading that comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36b through 49. Hear these words from Scripture. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Well, in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. May God bless the reading of this word, and may it bless our hearts, and may it bless our minds also, for this is the word of God for the people of God. And all God's people said, God. Friends, will you pl- pre- please pray with me as I prepare to speak with you under the title, He Opened Their Mind. Let's pray together. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are our strength and you are our Redeemer. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Do you ever have trouble understanding something? There's just some things 
in this world that I just don't understand. What about you? Like, why do people drive in parkways or park in driveways, right? You ever thought about that? Deep thoughts? Or there's just other things in this world like maybe some of you algebra. Algebra is a great difficulty and a source of great prayer in your prayer life, right? A great difficulty to understand. There's other things I don't understand, like like why uh, sometimes uh, people can be so cruel or difficult in the things that they say. Well, I once uh, vis- visited a, a senior living facility and I was uh, visiting around and I had someone say to me, don't waste your time with the people who can't talk. You know, that's tough to hear. And why would you say such a thing? Isn't everyone special? And isn't everyone in need of time and intention? I don't understand sometimes these things. But as a pastor, one of the things that people sometimes uh, talk with me about the most is about different Scriptures and about Scripture itself. And the focus and the understanding that I have as I talk with people and some of the struggles uh, I have uh, had at times as I've read the Scripture are this. And, And it has more to do with how we approach it. But is Scripture just something that happened in the past? Sometimes I have talked with people and it seems like their approach to Scripture, and sometimes mine has been, well, this is just something that happened a long time ago. What does it have to do with me right now? And I have a lot of people of course, and there is an assurance in Scripture in this, who seemingly have the sole focus about Scripture that it purely speaks about something having to do with the future, namely heaven. So, in one hand, is it just something that is about the past or happened in the past? On the other hand, is it just something that talks about what's going to happen in the future and talking about Heaven? I think with as many Scriptures as we have that sometimes it's difficult to understand it all. And the importance of how we approach it informs uh, what we receive from it. There was a man in Angola that was being visited by a seminary president one time. He happened to be on death row uh, there in Angola, down in southeast Louisiana. And they, and he was a convicted murderer. And they were having a conversation and uh, the man shared with the seminary president that he passed his time in prison by reading the New International Version of the Bible. And he said to the seminary president, you know, sometimes I realize that on any given day, across any given time, most everything that good that happens or is said in this world somehow comes from this book, our book. The truth of the whole world and everything that happens in this world somehow is in here, and I get to have a copy of all of that right here in my cell Isn't that something? I just know, he says, I'll just never get to the bottom of it all. I wonder if you or I, though, share the same excitement and curiosity of Scripture. Some of the greatest questions I ever received as a pastor came when I 
was visiting Caddo Correctional Center right here in Shreveport, and um, one of the people in prison uh, raised their hand and said, in John 14, Jesus prays to the Father. Now, if Jesus is God in the flesh, who is He praying to? Now, I thought that was a great question, right? In other words, is He talking to Himself? And we had to talk all through uh, many things about the Trinity and about uh, the relationship of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But right there in the Gospel of John, there was a reach towards understanding something much greater. I think sometimes we are intimidated at times by Scripture. But here we find in this passage something wonderful happening. It says, as He appears, the crucified and risen Christ, and let's recognize that the risen body of Jesus the scars were not erased. They were not wiped clean or through. In other words, there was a memory of what had happened. The resurrection didn't erase what had taken place on Good Friday. The resurrection didn't erase the past. Rather, it incorporated it and it lifted it up and it changed it all together into something wonderful and great. And here Jesus was, and oftentimes I have wanted to be one of the people that he was talking to, the risen Christ, as it says, he opened their mind to understand the scripture. Don't you want to be? Wouldn't you want to be one of those disciples as he referenced the scriptures? and explained it to them in a way? Wouldn't you wonder, what Scriptures was He talking about? And of course, Scripture in His day, He'd be referencing all of the Old Testament, what we know, now know as the Old Testament passages, or the Hebrew Bible passages as we sometimes refer to them as. Ah. And here, dynamically, in that midst, in the midst of, of this very passage that we read, and he is appearing to them, it's a physical presence, and he proves it through eating broiled fish, and he is explaining to them. He's opening their mind. He's saying, Look, I know you've heard these scriptures all your life. But now that you're experiencing me, now that I'm speaking of them, now that you're witnessing the fact that I am not, have not just been crucified and that I died, but I am alive before you, I'm going to help you not only by what I say, but by what you're experiencing to understand them in a way that they are being fulfilled right here before you. That they're not something that just happened or was said in the past, but they're for right here and right now. And the experience of the risen Christ put two and two together for them. It became the very lens through which they would look to reimagine God's salvation history and their part in the story and we even have that opportunity today. Everything that needed to be shown and told and taught had already taken place apparently in Jesus' ministry as narrated in the whole Gospel up to this point. And all that remained was for the disciples to understand how all that they had experienced in Jesus' presence represented nothing short of a very history coming to fulfillment before them. And today, we have that same opportunity to experience 
the crucified and risen Lord. In this very season, we celebrate and focus on the most of resurrection and have that as the lens through which we see Scripture ourselves in the world. To me, it's a life-changing and mind-altering experience. It's a powerful one. A powerful one, just like remember I was visiting that senior living facility and being somebody, you should know this if you don't already, that doesn't like to be told what to do. Amen? When that person told me, don't waste your time on visiting the people that can't talk. I walked into a room of a a woman and she couldn't verbally speak at all, but I read Scripture to her and she had a, a board to point to different letters and spell out what she was wanting to say in return to me. We talked for a while in this way. And then she reached for the Bible where I had read the Scripture. And she placed it on her heart and held it tied and hugged it as if it was a person. And we prayed together. And somehow I knew that my view of Scripture had been enhanced just by communicating with her that day. What I thought would be a blessing to her ended up being a blessing to me. What I could have heard and prevented me from ever going into her room, I didn't allow. And I felt the presence of the risen Christ in that moment. In that moment, and in these moments like it, the Scripture is not just something that happened in the past or speaks of something that will happen in the future for us. But the crucified and risen Christ, I say that in that way, we may not be used to hearing it, In other words, the risen Christ who still bears the scars and the wounds of His crucifixion, whose memory of it was not erased, nor was it erased by His disciples, is there. And He's not rallying the troops to say, okay, they did this to me. Let's go get them, right? I've never heard any rendition like that. No, rather. He's saying, I'm right here. I'm with you. I am the fulfillment of all the prophecy and Scripture. In your experience, this is being fulfilled in your hearing as Scripture often says. Right here, right now. It's alive. When I preach on Sunday morning, the prayer of my heart is, God, lift this Scripture off of the page and into our experience. It wasn't just the words that He was saying, but it was the actions that He was sharing. Not only the ones that He was sharing after the resurrection, but the ones that He shared in His ministry that were transformative to the people and are transformative to the world. It gives us a different view. Can you hear it? I wonder if He shared this Scripture from Isaiah 40. Verse 3, where the prophet writes about a person in the desert who prepares a way for the Lord. And the prophecy foreshadowed even the life of John the Baptist who played an important role. And I wonder if he started talking about and helping them to remember that this person was the groundwork for his ministry before them and that he is the fulfillment of the one who John the Baptist talked about that was preparing the way for. That could have been one of the Scriptures that he highlighted that day. Can we imagine? 
that it is. Or Isaiah 40, verse 1. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, and that she has received from the Lord's hand uh, double for all her sins. And a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the wilderness the highway of their God. That's the one about John the Baptist. Or the one where he would perform miracles in Isaiah 35. Say to those with fearful hearts in verse 4, Be strong. Do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. These could have been some of the Scriptures that He spoke of that day. Today, the Scripture, I know, he said, is fulfilled in your hearing. The Scripture is not just some account of what happened in history. It does speak to us about what happened. It does give us an account. The Scripture is not just something that speaks of heaven, although it does but it is for us to embrace and for us to receive right here and right now. And if, if Jesus opened their minds to understand the Scripture, then He can open our minds here today to understand it. Do you believe it, dear friends? That we have the ability through Jesus Christ as we experience His resurrection and as we see the Scripture through that lens that we too can understand the Scripture in a greater way by experiencing Him and also by seeing Him throughout Scripture. What about the one that's quoted in Luke chapter 4? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That's who Jesus is. It's Him. But it's also us as we receive the understanding of who He is and how it changes us. It affects us. It rearranges us. It releases us from sin. It releases us from oppression. It restores us to new life as we receive the understanding of it. That He fulfilled it all and that He shares it with us. So from a prison cell, there's a man who's on death row who reads the Scripture. And he can be free. There's us who could be overly burdened down by the difficulty of oppressive thoughts about ourselves or others, and we could be set free. All of these ways. Jesus is alive and, and active, and we can embrace the Scripture fully for us today because He's here and we can ask Him to open our minds to open our minds to understand the Scripture. It's a wonderful prayer to pray. And when we pray it, I think we'll be able to see. We'll be able to see Him in it. In each and every word. How death doesn't have the last word. 
anymore. But life, and life in His name does. That we can live today. We're not just waiting on heaven, although it is there for us. We're just not wondering in the past. But it's alive for us here today. I pray. I pray that He opens our mind to understand the Scripture. That all these prophecies, that the things that were foretold, that we'll know it's about Him, that He's the Messiah, the One who is to save us. And saves us and heals us today. Amen? It's for today. He's here today. If you wish a greater understanding of the Scripture, an experience of Him, I pray you'll respond today and come and follow Him with me. Will you please pray with me? Jesus, sometimes I wish I could have been there long ago as you open the disciples' minds to understand the Scriptures. But I want to acknowledge you are here with your disciples now. And you're ready to open our minds. Jesus, help us to see in every experience of goodness that we have and in every scripture that is about you. Help us to receive it, the fullness of it, and experience it through looking at it, through seeing you as the risen one, the crucified and risen one that saves us, heals us, and redeems us, and the world as well. For this we are forever thankful. In your name we pray. Amen. Our final hymn of invitation is Christ is Alive. If there's anyone here in this place that needs to come forward and give your life over to Christ, maybe you've been lingering, wondering if the Scripture has to do with just an account of the past or it only tells of heaven. Maybe today you realize it's something much greater. That it speaks of who you can be today because of the work that he has done for you and for us. And you've never given your life to follow him and to share in that joy. I want to invite you to come forward. If there's anyone in this place who has done that in another time and place and you wish to join uh, the life of this church and community as we follow Christ together, I invite you to come forward. And if today you've been here for a while and your heart is saying, I wish to have a greater understanding of the Scripture. I want Jesus to open my mind to greater understanding of the Word of God, the Scripture. Then come and let's pray together. Or you want to celebrate how God has been speaking you, to you through Holy Scripture then come and let's celebrate that. And as you come, let us all stand and sing Christ is Alive, verses 1, 2, and 5. Palestine 
he come proclaim and here and now to dwell in every place and time christ is alive and come oh bring good news to this and every age till earth and all creation ring with joy with just love and praise amen uh, now receive this benediction as we go forth as christians and christ followers into the world may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you May the Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you peace, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.